my mother, pray anytime, just pray, pray when you say, and pray, pray when you pray. Let us pray before we proceed, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful for this prayer week you have accorded us as Baraton University Church. We pray that may this week of prayer be a blessing to all of us because we have prayed in Jesus' name. So this morning, we are first of all going to see in the book of Luke, uh, Luke 18, verse 10, allow me to read and we see what the Bible records for us. Luke 18, let us all turn to our Bible. Luke 18, verse 10 to 14. The Bible records that uh, two men went to pray up the temple, one Pharisee and another one a tax collector. The Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself. God, I thank you that I am not like other men, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. Twelve, I fast twice a week, and I give tent of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. 14. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humble, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Here we are seeing, here in the book of Luke, recorded a, a parable of a Pharisee and a tax collector. The two of them went to the temple and they prayed. They went to seek the Lord in prayer. And we see the first one, this man called a Pharisee. He was full of pride. He went and prayed and knelt down and said, God, you know I'm not like this tax collector. He prayed that I'm not an evil doer. I'm not adulterer. He was having a lot of pride deep inside his heart. We see the remarks he's mentioning that I'm not like other men, ropers, liars. But we see this sinner, a publican, a tax collector, when he went before the Lord, he, even, he was afraid to look up to heaven, but the rata bleated up on his chest and cried and said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And the Bible confirmed that this tax collector went home when he was justified. The same case, all of us Christians, we have to learn a moral lesson here that uh, we need at all time, it is very important for all of us, when we call before the Lord, we call with a lot of humility and we acknowledge that we are all sinners. When he acknowledged that he was a sinner and when he was, when he was done with his prayer, the Bible is confirming that he went home a better man. He went home justified and the Bible says, he who exalts himself will be humble, and he who humble himself will be exalted. This is a moral lesson for all of us that Christians, we need at all time in our lives that it's not about our outward appearance. It's not about how we do things, but deep inside our heart, the two things that we see in those, the, the two people that we have just seen a publican and a tax collector, a, a, a Pharisee, was deep inside their hearts. One recognized deep inside his heart that he was a great sinner and he knew that he needed forgiveness. He needed mercy. He needed grace before the throne of God. 
the same case to the other one, the outward religious guy. He thought he deserved honor from God. He thought that he knew a lot about God. So Jesus reminds us that our faith is not about religious pretentious scheme, but it's about how we humble ourselves and we respond so that God can give us another chance of forgiveness. So another thing we are going to see, we are also going to see in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, we are seeing Peter, the church members gathered, 12 verse 5. Acts 12 5, the Bible records that, so Peter was kept in prison, but the church members was honestly praying to God for him. We see in this book of Acts, the characters are mentioned here are three of them. We have King Herod, we have Peter, and we have James and Rhoda. King Herod is famously known as uh, King Herod the Agrippa. He was the grandson of the first Herod, and he was the nephew of the second Herod. The Bible recalls that this Herod that we are being mentioned here in the book of Acts is the Herod that is not the one who actually who, who, who killed the infants in Bethlehem. He's not the one who killed the John, John the Baptist, who beheaded his head off. No, here is actually King Herod, a very skilled politician. He was known to be a very good orator, a talented guy. But we see he persecuted Christians. We see that he hung James, the brother of John. And we see because what he did pleased a lot the Jewish people, he later went and also uh, among the disciples of Jesus was Peter. He went and hauled Peter and put him in prison. And Peter was on a very tight security, very tight security. And he was locked inside the prison. And there were three main gates. The first main entrance with iron gate, and then two more gates. And four squads of soldiers. And we see chains all over, chains on the hands, chains on the legs, and on the west of Peter. There was no way you could escape. Four squads of soldiers, meaning a total of 14, 16 of them, 16 squads of soldiers were in charge, ensuring that there was no way out. There was no way out Peter could escape. But the good news is the church members gathered together in the house of Mary and they prayed honestly to God so that Peter, so he see, they see God, they pleaded with God in their prayers and God answered their prayers. We see the Bible records that God was able to deliver Peter. He sent the angel at midnight. While Peter was in prison, deep in sleep. This is very amazing. You can imagine someone in Langata uh, Maximum Prison here in Kenya. And he know the following day tomorrow, you are going to be hung. But this guy was so much comfortable. He was not scared. He was not worried that tomorrow he's going to die. But he was deep sleep. He was sleeping in a prison cell. But we have been told that the angel of the Lord came and the light shone in prison. And Peter was able to see. The angel came and woke him up, Peter. Peter was able to see the light. And he was the only one who was able to notice that the angel of the Lord is in. When Peter was up, the, the chain fell off from his hands and legs. And the angel of the Lord told him, put on your garments, put on your sandals. Peter woke up, followed the instruction that the angel of the Lord was telling him. He put on his sandal 
And he followed the angel and he went out the first door, the second door, and when they reached the iron gate that lead to the street, Peter recognized, he came back to his senses. He thought he was in a vision. And he said, now I know that the God whom I serve has sent the angel to deliver me out of this prison. He went to the house of Mary and testified what the Lord has done. The same case all of us. God was able to deliver Peter in prison. Even as Paraton community, God is able to deliver us regardless of our situation. Be it the financial situation, be it family problems, be it health, whatever the situation that we are in, God is able to deliver us the way he did to Peter in prison. Again, we see in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 6, allow me to read Daniel chapter 6 verse 10, uh, the Bible record of Daniel praying three times a day. Uh, 610 say, Now, when Daniel learned that the decree has been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the window was open towards Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed giving thanks to God just as he has done before. Here we see a man of God called Daniel. Daniel, we see the beginning of chapter 6. He was actually the leader among the 120 provinces that King Darius was having. And because he was appointed as a leader among the 120 prophets, the people who are working, the leaders who are working together, they were jealous of Daniel because the spirit of the Lord was with Daniel. Whatever Daniel was doing, he was prospering. He was doing with a lot of excellence. And we see there was jealousy. They were not happy about the progress of Daniel. The Bible recalls that they sought of a plan of how to actually to put Daniel in trouble, but it was very difficult. And they all agree that, and they say, the only way we can, we can have this Daniel put into actually a dance of lion is because we can plot and come up, because, and there's nothing because they, when they try everything, to look anything against Daniel, it was nothing. There was nothing to bring before Daniel to be blamed. So they say the only thing we can do is about this God. They all met and make a decree that we go before the king and issue a decree that for the next 30 days, no man, not anybody, is supposed to worship any other God except the king. They made a decree and they issued it. And they went before the king and the king was able to sign. And they made it as a law. So they waited Daniel as usual. Daniel woke up in the morning and he went to pray in the upper chamber three times a day as usual. Facing Jerusalem and when he was still praying, they came and followed and to see whether Daniel was going to obey the decree issued by the king. And when they came that very time, they found Daniel praying. And now they have got it. I think they, they have now they were very happy. They were very excited because they have found an excuse. They have found a reason so that Daniel can be in the dance of lion. So they came before the king, and the king loved Daniel so much. He was so disturbed. He was so distressed. He had no peace at all. So Daniel was tied, put inside the den of lion. 
The king said, when he was taken to the den of lion, he said to Daniel, may the God whom you continually serve rescue you in the dungeon of lion. So Daniel was drawn deep inside the den of lion. The whole night the king was praying and fasting for Daniel. He had no peace. He never slept the whole night. And early the following morning, the king went first where Daniel was thrown, the den of lion. And as he was approaching, he said in a loud voice, Daniel, did the God whom you serve continually, was he able to save you? Daniel responded and said, King, live forever. God whom I sent, send the angel of the Lord and put the mouth of the lion, actually they were able to, actually God was able to send his angel. And the, the lions, in, inside the den of the lion, Daniel was still alive. Amen. So the king gave an order and immediately Daniel deep inside the den of lion was removed and all those people who plotted against Daniel was drawn deep inside the den of lion them and their families all of them so we are seeing the king coming later and saying in all my palace and my dominion from now and forever I want everyone and everywhere that we fear the God of Daniel we worship the true living God of Daniel. So my brothers and sisters, we are seeing these three things that we have learned this morning. The prayer of the tax collector and a Pharisee. We see the prayer of the church members to Peter in prison. And we have seen the prayer of Daniel. The same case to all of us. God was able to deliver Peter in prison. God was able to deliver Daniel in the den of lion because of his prayers. The same God, even us, is able to deliver us this morning here in BUC Church if we are to go before him in our prayers. When we go and present our discouragement, our petitions, our prayer requests before the Lord, our God is so faithful that he is so faithful that he is not going to let us down, but he is going to answer all of us according to his riches of grace. It's my prayer this morning that as we are going to begin this day and as we continue throughout this week of prayer, may God grant us hope. May God, the God of Daniel, the God who rescued Peter, and the God whom the tax collector went before him and said, have mercy, come on our way and meet us at our point of need. May God, if we have any prayer request, may he answer it according to his riches of Christ. This morning, it's my prayer that may God keep you, bless you, and see you through as we continue with this week of prayer. Pray, Amen. pray, my mother, pray anytime, just pray, pray when you say, and pray, pray when you pray, pray when you're weak, pray when you pray weak. when you're strong, pray when you're strong, just pray and pray, cause anytime is prayer time. When you see that all the things are going well, you've got your wife and the kids a nice family. Talk to God and thank Him in prayer. When you feel that your bones are still in place, you still can walk to and fro. Talk to God and thank Him in prayer. Pray. Pray without ceasing. Pray anytime. Just pray. Pray when you said. Pray. Pray when you pray. Pray when you're weak. Pray when you pray. Weak. When you're strong. Pray when you're strong. Just pray and pray.